All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming and signing in to join this webinar. We appreciate your time here with us this afternoon. Obviously, you could have been anywhere else on an afternoon like this, but you chose to be here, so we acknowledge that and we appreciate it. We will begin by talking about the facility lighting program, the LAS facility lighting program. And just by the way, if you have any question throughout the, the presentation, there's a Q&A button at the, at the beneath your screen. You can submit those questions and we'll address it in the course of the presentation. So first of all, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Christian Tam. I'm the LAS Municipal Energy Specialist responsible for Southwestern Ontario. But I can go anywhere in the province. Just give me a call. I'll be there. I'm not just restricted to Southwestern Ontario. Before I took on this job, I was an energy manager with a municipality in Southwestern Ontario. And uh, after some years of doing that, I came to LAS. So it's been good. What do we do at LAS? We want to introduce this new program that we've got on, we currently have now. This program used to be called the Recreational Facility Lighting, which began in 2015. It became very popular among municipalities and quite successful. And in the summer of this year, we expanded the program to include all municipal buildings, basically. So what that means is that we're just not restricted to arenas as it used to be, but then we can do any municipal buildings. But just to say that even before we expanded it, we were working on other municipal buildings. We, we, we did uh, pools, we did uh, uh, municipal work garages, we did uh, long-term care facilities, but we had not officially expanded the program. But now we have officially expanded it and we just want to talk to you more about that. Well, some of the successes of recreational facility lighting, I would say, is in one good example would be in 2017, for instance, the energy savings that the program helped municipalities in order to, to accrue in their budget was well over 180,000 as per the amount of energy savings and the municipalities that participated. So it was certainly a very successful program. But what does this program aim at? The main idea is to reduce our energy cost, to reduce operating and maintenance costs as well, to save energy and cut on you know, GAG, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And of course, we know that when you, have, when you have got good light levels, there is a potential for worker safety and maximize production as well. So that is what this program is all about. There is the aspect of enhanced asset management that comes through when you change your lights and you have new, you have better lighting system in your facilities. And of course, there's a compliance with Regulation 597 that comes into play. So that's what this program does. What does it cover? It's high bay fixtures, basically arenas, as I said earlier on, is something that we, we've been doing for some time now and we still do. Uh, we will see a couple of examples of some municipalities that have participated and the, the benefits that they, they got from the, pro, the, the program. We do public work and transit garages. It covers fire, fire and ambulance halls. It does pools and gymnasiums. And of course, fluorescent fixtures, which have all the above list in our in office and meeting rooms, hallways, common areas, community centers, and of course, other fixture options like pot lights and decorative. It's all catered for under this new program. Well, what's included in this LAS service? The first thing that I would like to share you know, with you this afternoon is that we've got what we call the financial analysis. So what does mean is that if you want to participate in this program, we will first do a financial analysis for you. We do a project proposal with a financial analysis indicating um, your return on investment, uh, how much incentives you will qualify for, and all those the kind of information that will enable you to make a decision whether to proceed or not to proceed. After the financial analysis, we do what we call the photometric design. And actually, the, our photometric designs are value added that, we, that comes with this package because we don't just take old lights and put new lights there, but then we, we do a design that to make sure that the light levels in terms of the food candles complies with the IES standards in terms of what amount of life level you should have in an arena, in a municipal office, or a community center. 
So that is an added benefit that comes with this program. Of course, there's the incentive application that we do, we, we do as well. And that takes the load from the municipalities, uh, especially for municipalities that don't have enough staff. This really comes in handy. But LAS will be doing this incentive in play, uh, application, talking to the LDCs on your behalf, and whatever incentives that you are, you, are, you, you are entitled to as a result of this program, you do get it. Then there's a product purchase and there's project manager, uh, management aspect that we do, the installation, commission, and of course, the financing. We've got a financing part of it. I know so far no municipality has used it yet because municipalities have their way of financing their own programs, but this aspect is also available. And if you want to, you can look at that aspect as well with CIBC that we do with that financing. Well, what, what had happened currently, as, as I speak with you, we have a service provider, Conrad Lighting Solution, that we work with. Um, and we have product suppliers like QT, Philips, uh, as one of the product suppliers that we work with, and Gary. But then, before we, we, are, we got to these guys, in, uh, we undertook an RFP pro process for product supply and for a service provider. And a full summary of that is available on our website. And the RFP documents and the submissions were reviewed by an evaluation committee. And the, the committee comprised of a uh, cross section of municipal, municipal staff that were on the committee, LAS staff, and of course, experts from industry. Our RFP met and surpassed the municipal procurement standards in the sense that it complies with the Canadian Free Trade Agreement, which came into effect in 2017. There was an extensive consultation with a legal firm to make sure that whatever we are doing, we comply with this kind of regulation that had just come on board. And at the end of the day, these were the successful vendors and the, that we came up with and the service provider. Um, one question that we always get, I've, I've got it now a couple of times, now people tell me that, okay, we are a municipality, we are not supposed to single source. Well, the way around this is that you have got a clause in your purchasing agreement that allow you to purchase cooperatively. And as a municipality who is part of EMO, you can purchase our services you know, under that clause, cooperative purchasing, and you can go through that, that kind of a clause to pursue a project or to pursue this program with us. Well, these are some of the lighting products that we have with the new program. We've got the high bay lights that we used to, we used to have you know, in our arenas. We have the trophies. We have the retrofit kits. And of course, we've got the LED tubes as well that can, comes with it. And the many options, including the spotlights, the wall pack, and, and the motion sensors as well that comes with. Well, control options is a feature also that comes with, with, with this new program. In the sense that it, we know light equals money. In the sense, if you, if you manage your light output, you can manage your savings, so to say. If you manage your light output, you can manage your operating budget. Because if you have an old inefficient light and you remove it from there and you put in a, 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 a new efficient one, there is a reduction in, in, the, in the energy cost, and we're going to see examples of municipalities that have benefited from that. But after you've done that, that's, it's not automatic that the employees or the staff are going to turn off the light. So a control options come in quite handy. Occupancy sensors come in handy that will control that very aspect of people leaving the lights on without turning them off. So that's another, another package that comes with this new program. Examples of some of the municipalities that we have worked with or that have participated in this program, Kenora Aquatic Pool. Um, the Kenora came to us at a time where they, this, they were complaining of a huge energy cost. Energy consumption was high for them, energy cost was also high. But at the same time also, there was a safety issue with their lights in the sense that it was throwing, there was a glare on the pool. So we, they came to us, they worked through our program and we, we replaced the T5s that were high bay T5s that were there with the Acuity DX, DSX PGT high bay lights. And you can see from your screen that their energy costs you now from 15,000 
it was bumped down to 5,000. The project cost was 49,000. Of course, they had incentives for it to do this project and the payback was just under four years. Well, they had incentive as much as 4,158 to do it. And we have spoken to them, we've got a great testimonial from Kenora in terms of this work that we did with them. This has not been the only work, they have come to us with other projects and currently as I speak in this year, we've just done, we just finished a library just this August with Kenora. So obviously Kenora is happy with us and they have seen nothing but you know, classes and positive things from this program. The Aurora also, we did a strainage center with, with, with Toyota Arena. It was an old system of the metal halides that used to be there, high bay, and we replaced that with Acuity uh, IBG high bay. And of course, you could see from your screen that consumption was way over 100,000, 148, 786 kilowatts per, per hour per year, and that got reduced to just under 50,000. And the energy cost of once again from 23,000 got bumped down to 7,000. The project cost was 6,000 plus. Of course, they had incentives as much as 6,000 for it. And the payback for Stronach was just under four years, 3.05 years. Stronach, we've done lots of projects. Actually, Aurora has done, this is one of the, of, the, of, of the few that they have done with us. They've done so many other projects with us ever since this program started. And they have also see nothing but only good in this program and they keep coming you know, to us to, 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 to convert their lives, basically. Then there's Middlesex County garages as well that we did. These were, were a couple of, three of the garages, but I'll just talk on the Melbourne one. A garage of 8,000 square feet built in 2003. And they had an issue with energy consumption also with high bay lights and T8. So when they came, they participated in the program and the energy costs, of course, got reduced from 7,000 to way, way below to, well, just a little over, over 2,000. They got incentives for it and the payback was three years for the project. The project cost was 22,800. Whilst I'm speaking, like I said earlier, if you have questions, please shoot us the questions through Q&A and we'll be more than willing to answer all your questions as well. Well, Kenora, once again, there's a water treatment plant that they, we, we worked with them. They had T12s and T8s there. We converted all the T12s and the T8s to LED lamps. Consumption was really huge, over 116,605 kilowatts hour per year. After the conversion, that got reduced to 41,000. Energy cost from 20,990 per year got reduced to 7,400. To me, that is a great business case to convert your lights from T12s and TAs to LEDs. Yeah, the project cost was 76, but they had incentives as huge as 6,000 plus for it. They eliminated the maintenance savings of 2,500. Return on investment was 23%, and their payback was just under five years, once again, 4.34 years. Kenora, as I said earlier, has love this program and they are still doing projects with us. So after I've said all this, how do we join this? Or how do you participate in this program? It's simple and straightforward. Seven basic or simple steps. First of all, you complete an LAS questionnaire for each of your facilities that you want to convert. Then uh, we will do a budget proposal, a very high level business case, telling you how much basically it's going to cost you and we will send that across to you. Once you have a look at it, if you're happy with it, you sign a letter of intent. A letter of intent saying you want to do business with us, so to say. Then we will bring, then after that, the fourth step, we bring our, our service provider, that's uh, Conrad Lighting Solution, to do what is called an investment grade audit. The investment grade audit is, is that part of the puzzle that in case when you give us the light count, you miss something in, in, in the count, they will come and confirm the actual situation on the ground in terms of the, how many lights you have in that particular facility. And then from there, you do a detailed and a real uh, proposal, just speaking to the, the number of lights and how much it's going to cost you. Then, of course, after approval by your municipal board council, we do the incentive application, you sign the contract and the project commences. 
So it's very easy to, to participate in it. It's not difficult. You just go on our website or shoot, shoot us an email, either myself or John, John Conrad, as you can see, and we are more than willing to work with you and to help you enjoy some of these pluses these guys have, have, have enjoyed in terms of energy savings. Okay, I will take a second to look at some of the questions that I have here. It's, uh, okay, there's a question. Could you explain one more time how you get around this issue of sole sourcing? You mentioned co corporate purchasing clause, but I'm not sure what that refers to. Okay. Now I need to take, talk slowly because I know with my accent, when I speak too fast, people don't hear me. So I have to kind of pace myself and speak very slowly. Okay. The way we get around this uh, uh, corporate purchasing is co cooperative. As, as a municipality, you're part of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. So it's a, co a cooperative uh, kind of a, a body that we have here, which you are part of. So for you to bypass the clause of single sourcing or sole sourcing, you use that clause within your purchasing agreement or procurement, procurement agreement that says as a municipality, you're allowed to purchase corporately, co 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 yeah, cooperatively. So you, you use that clause and as a result of that clause, you'll be able to participate in our service without being found guilty, so to say, on the aspect of so sole sourcing that you sole sourcing or single sourcing from a, a particular municipality without, I mean, from a particular vendor without, without uh, consulting with the others. I don't know if that explains the point, but basically I'll give a good example. Uh, Haldeman County, want, they've done street light project with LAS. They wanted, there was a long-term care facility that they wanted to convey to, L, to LEDs and they wanted us to work with them. Procurement sent me an email to say, hey, how can we do this? Because if we just come to you, it will be like we single sourcing. And I said, okay, but we did a street lights through a cooperative purchasing and it's okay. So they use the same clause with cooperative purchasing and as a result of that, they were able to participate. And we just finished those, the, the long-term care facility without Man County. So it is something that is there. If I need to send something in writing, I can send it more to you. I hope I've made myself clear to that question. The other question is that, is there a cost associated with the initial financial analysis? No, there is no cost associated with the initial financial analysis. It's all a service that is part of the package. You just send me an email or send John Conrad an email, say, hey, we've got X number of buildings or facilities. We want to convey to LED, how much is it going to cost us? The next thing we will do is we will send you a questionnaire that you have to do a count, literally do a count of all the, the number of lights that's within those facilities. Then when you send us that, that count, based on that, we'll be able to, of course, with that count, we know the amount of lights that you, lamps that you want to change, you know the wattage, and we know the operational hours. So from that, that information, we are able to do our, our cost and the financial analysis. But then there is no cost, it's part of the package. From that point up to when you finally sign your letter of intent to work with us, there is basically no cost. The cost is after the letter of intent, of course, you pay us for the service that we render by changing the lights for you. I hope I've answered that question also. There is another question. It's okay, I'll read this question just for the benefit of all the others. Is there a minimum purchase amount? No, there isn't a minimum purchase amount. If indeed, by in this case, you are referring to purchase amount as how you are participating in one building and it's 9,000 bucks. Is that a mean? No, there isn't. We, I, we just did a proposal for a municipality, uh, Meford, yeah, their water treatment plant. And it came up to around 9,500 or so. A couple of lights they want to change. So there is no minimum amount. You can as low as it gets, but it has to be reasonable, of course. Then can we use our own electrician? Sure, you can use your own electrician, but we will project manage the whole, the whole process. 
uh, we will do the, the incentives application. We will, we will do the project, uh, what you call the financial analysis. We do the photometric design. But then when it comes to the aspect of the boat and the nuts, if you want to use your electrician, yeah, uh, yes, you can use your own electrician. Can we, second question is, can we have our electrician to use your services for the town's benefit? I'm not sure if I understand that question, but then does that mean, is that, ref, is that continue, a continuation of the first question? Okay, they say, can we have our electrician use your services for the town's benefit? Uh, yeah, if you have your electricians that you want to work with, sure you are allowed to work with them. But like I said earlier, we will manage the process, but then when it comes to the boats and the nuts of it, then your electrician will do, will do it. And does this include ballast? Sure, yeah, it includes the ballast as well. Changing the ballast and putting new ballast. How long is the process from design and budget to ordering? It depends. Uh, the process from design to budget, it truly depends. Like I said, I'll give an example, practical examples of some of the work that we have done. So I'll mention names of municipalities, but those are, those, it's a good thing to at least to, to have a reference point to what has happened. Meford, for instance, August 15, I got a phone call from Meford municipality, municipality of Meford. I was on vacation, came back from vacation on the 23rd of August, got his message, got back to him. He said, okay, yes, we've got this water treatment plant that we want to convert you know, to LEDs. We, I sent him the questionnaire, that's from August 15th. 23rd, I spoke with him, sent him the questionnaire. 27th, he came back to me with a questionnaire. Yesterday, we sent him the proposal. Yesterday was the 9th, 10th of September. We sent him the proposal. And the same yesterday, we are applying for the incentives on his behalf. So within less than a, a month plus, or less than a month, yeah, we one municipality is on the go and, and running. So it all depends on how quick you, 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 you respond to the questionnaires that we send you in terms of the, in terms of the, of the number of lights that you have in the facility. It all depends on, on the municipality. But then I've given one practical example of me felt that less than a month, we almost, we, we do an incentive application and up to finish is going to be done after, after the incentive application, of course, our guys will move in there. So by the end of September, that project should be up and running. So it, it all depends on, on the municipality. Yeah. And there's another question. Uh, do we go through you personally or do we have to go through our energy team? Oh, sure. You come through me personally. Uh, to the, to the one who asked that question. Yes, you will come through us personally. You go on the LAS website, you go on the LAS facility, facility light, uh, facility lighting services web website, you see an LAS where, as, even as you can see the LAS where website, las.on.ca, or shoot me an email and say, okay, I've got X number of properties or X number of facilities that I want to convert into LED then I will send you the questionnaire. So once you get a questionnaire, then you send me the count in terms of the number of buildings that you do have there and, and in terms of the number of lamps that you do have there. And after you've given me those, those count, we will do our service provider, John, uh, Conrad Lighting Solution will do the, the proposal. And yeah, then from there, if you're okay with the proposal, we come and do the actual this actual uh, visit of the site, which is the inv investment grade audit. So you come through me personally, through our website, through my email, as you can see there, my phone number is there, my email address is there. And I just cited an example of getting a phone call whilst I was on vacation from the municipality of Meford, responded to it, and in less than a month, and a, a month plus, we should be done with the project with them. At most two months, we'll be done with the project. What is your warranty? Oh, it all comes with manufacturer warranty. Uh, our products, I mean, we've got guys like Philips we're working with, these are brand names. We've got guys like Acuity we're working with, that has uh, a 60,000 square feet uh, distribution uh, center right here in Ontario. And we, of course, we've got Sylvania that we're working with. So the five-year manufacturer warranty, the 10-year, but the minimum of five-year warranty is there. If you want a standard warranty, that is also, we can also look at that. But sure, to answer your question, what is your warranty? It comes with a warranty. Okay. 
Well, still open for some more questions. Oh, I, okay. I hear the incentives are ending September 10. Do you know what the new incentive program is? The incentives are not ending, and I thank the one who has this question for asking such a brilliant question. It is brilliant because the incentives are not ending. The incentives are here, and they are still here with us until, as at now, till December 31st, 2020. After December 21st, 2020, we do not know what will happen with, with regarding incentives because we, we all know we have a new government in Ontario, so we do not know. But for now, they are still here until December uh, 31st, 2020. What ended in, and it, it, it not even end, what happened on September 10th, that was yesterday, was some of the, of the, of the lamps got bumped down. I mean, like the, the incentives was, were slightly reduced. One good example, an LED lamp, which used to be an LED, linear LED TH lamp, which used to be a $7 for an incentive, got reduced to a lesser amount, I think four bucks now. So for those that haven't done it yet, you know, they will lose out, I mean, $3 in terms of incentives, but they are still with us. So those were the changes that happened on the September 10th, that was yesterday. And I know I'm grateful to, for this question because it might have been misconstrued that the incentives have ended. And that's why I'm glad this question was asked. It has not ended, it's still here with us and it's going to be here, like I said, till December of 2020. But we are appealing to municipalities. If you really want between 10 to 15% of your project costs to be catered for by incentives, this is the time to do it. Because after December 2020, we don't know what will happen and you'll be all by yourself to do your projects. There'll be no incentives from the government, so to speak, at this point. But as of now, we still have it and it's here with us. And that's why we keep telling municipalities, just if you want to go any project that you want to do, just work on it now because in a few years time, not a few years, 2019 is just around the corner and 20 will be coming soon. The incentives are officially will be over. We don't know what the replacement is going to be. Good, looking for more, more questions. There is another question. Okay, uh, 10 to 15 percent coverage by incentive. Incentives is fairly typical. Sure, it is fairly typical. 10 to 15 percent. If you can, if you're still with me, let me go back to the the some of the, the slides or some of the projects that we did work on, for instance. Yeah, with Middlesex County garages, you can see that. The project cost was 22,800 there, and we got incentives for 4,000. So you can work out the percentage. What kind of percentage is that? And with, uh, yeah, 10% will be 2,000. So, yeah. But you can see it's 4,000. So we see that there. Then with, uh, with, with, with the Canara water plant, the project cost was. 76,624, got incentives for 6,650. So just a little under 10% sure. So to answer your question, 10 to 15% is fairly at times. Hoover's around 9%, but 10 to 15 is, is, is fairly typical. Then of course, there is another project uh, that one has to look at. Uh, yeah, with, with Aurora also, yeah, it was 6,640. That was a project cost for converting their meta highlights you know, to the acuity IBH high bay, 66,400. We got incentives for 6,800, so that is just the 10% mark. So to answer your question, yeah, that is fairly typical. And to me, the more buildings you have, the, 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 the more the incentives is going to be. And of course, the more outdated your lights are in terms of meta highlights, um, uh, T12s, T8s, I mean, you don't have to be having those type of lights at this point in time because it is not really helping in terms of your energy costs. Those lights are just letting your energy costs skyrocket or just shooting through the roof. So when you change them, when there is 10% to 15% of funds you know, to help you change them, I think it's, it's, it's a good business decision for anyone to do. 
And one thing, one good example I'll say about LEDs, I always, when I'm talking to my son, who is a great loving guy, he said, but daddy, this LED things, what, what is LED and all cheeky? He keeps say, talking and I said, look, we can, I can compare it to the days of the flip phone and the days of the smartphones. Okay, I get it, I get it now. So you're telling me the T12s are like the flip phones and the T meta highlights, I say, sure, sure, son, that's exactly what I mean. So those are the flip phones and the LEDs are the smartphones. So that's a good comparison. In this day and age, we are the technology is at that level. You can use technology to reduce your energy costs. There, there is a company I wouldn't want to mention the name, but then they, a huge organization, they realized that the energy cost was becoming an issue, and they just didn't know what to do. So they said, okay, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at our lights and they converted all their lights into LEDs. And it's on record, in one particular month, they saved $15,000 as energy, as savings from energy costs. One month, $15,000. You can imagine what a year will be. So the math is there, the science is behind it, and it's just the right thing to do. So the only thing that I always tell people will stop us from not doing it, maybe not prioritizing it, but then if we really want to and maybe get some financial help from government, this is really the, the time to go ahead and do it. Um, any more questions? Oh yes, there's another question here. I plan on hooking up our lighting with our building automation system. Do we have to use your technology or we can use our own technology from our existing company? Unsure if you supply different technology. Okay. Um, you can still use us. We can talk about it and we, you can still use our facility lighting service and we will see how we work with the building automation system. It's something that we could do. So you can shoot me an email or give me a call and we can talk about that. It's, it's something that can be done. Yeah. And just one, I'm just thinking of more stories to say because with a story, you always make a point than just talking figures. And of course, the case studies we shared with these municipalities speaks volumes. But then it is being said that lighting is lighting, of course, 8%, 11%, in commercial institutional, 11% of you, energy usage comes from lighting. HVAC takes 50 and the others takes motors and stuff takes, but lighting takes about 11%. And it's been said that if you really want to reduce energy costs, one of the low hanging fruit to reduce energy costs is through lighting. Just convert your lights from the old type of lights. They were good in those years, 20, 30 years ago, those metal lights and the high pressure sodiums were the best lights that we had. But as we progress, they have become outdated. And the more outdated they are, the more you go down to them, the more it's costing you money. But once you convert them, you will see the benefits thereof as these three municipalities that I, uh, we spoke about this afternoon. Okay, I'll just give some two or three more minutes for some more questions. Thank you for your, your questions. I really enjoyed the question session. It was brilliant. Thank you for all who asked questions. And any more questions? Going, going, gone. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. And once again, our contact details are there. Give me a call, shoot me an email, go to our website, read more about the RFP process and how we did it. Very, very uh, thorough process. So whoever we are presenting to you as a product supplier, service provider, we can guarantee at the best. And therefore, when you come with us and you join this program, you will see nothing but success and, and, and a lot of energy savings as the municipalities that save that much amount in, you know, in 2017. So I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. And once again, thanks for joining and have a pleasant day. Talk to you later.